Hi, in this video we're going to talk about a program you could use to edit multiple photos at the same time. So let's say you want to do something like add a border, make it black and white, add a sepia filter, uh, add some text watermark, image watermark, crop it, resize it, that type of thing. So you could apply these changes to multiple photos at once once you configure it. So the program's called Batch Photo. So once you install it and open it up here, you'll have your main window here where you could drag and drop photos or click add and take them from there. So I'm going to add all these Hawaii pictures here. So just drag them in the window. And you could kind of get a preview here by clicking on them. You could change the view here if you want to. Add, add more, remove more. And before you get started, what you should do is go to the setup here and make sure you have the right destination. So I changed it from the default to my updated folder here. So that way that's where the uh, changed pictures will go because it's not going to overwrite the originals. It's going to uh, make copies and put them in a different location here. Unless you pick one of these options here. And then you have some other options for destination there. Then you have some output formats for the images, all kinds here. And you have settings for the output format. And then some other settings down here. And then you have some settings up here if you go to the edit menu. Like that. So quite a bit of configuration you could do. All right, so back to the, uh, so we got the photos here. If we go to edit photos, you can see we have previews down here. We have presets that you could change. And if you want to switch the view between the edited and non-edited, which I'll show you in a second here. All right, so now we need to add a filter. So you have all filters in one location, or you could have them broken down into categories. So we're going to do, let's say, a text watermark. So here we can edit the settings for this filter. So let's say do not copy. And let's say we want to put it in the middle. And we want the text to be red. Like that. Click OK. Then you can switch back and forth between the view and get a preview. So now since these pictures are different sizes, this watermark is going to change varying on the, you know, the dimensions of the picture, so keep that in mind. Okay, so once everything looks good, well actually if you want you could go back in, select it, click on edit, and then you know change some of the settings there too if you want. I'm going to bump up the alpha percentage here, let's say 80. That'll fade it out more, let's say 40. Make it darker. Alright, so once you have everything ready, click on the process button here, ready to process. So it gives you a little summary here. Now I can go to my updated folder that I configured in the settings. And now I have my pictures here. Like so. Now let's say I want to go back and do something else with these pictures here. So I can add another filter. Let's say we're going to make a sepia filter here. Gives you a little preview. You can switch the view. Click OK. So now we have both these checked, so it's going to have both filters applied. And so just go back to process, ready to process. Now it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite the pictures in the output folder. So you could say yes to each one and go filter through them, or no to some, yes to some other ones. You could have it rename it with uh, different names so you don't overwrite your other ones. But I'm just going to say yes to all. Okay, so now it's done here. So on my this computer, for some reason, it doesn't like to refresh the thumbnails. But if I open one, you can see we have the sepia filter with the uh, text watermark. Like so. And then let's say you want to go back and say, I don't want the sepia filter. You can uncheck it. Process it again. Yes to all. Okay. And if we go back, like so. And then we could remove the watermark. And 
and now that's gone. So one thing you want to remember, so if you make some changes to some pictures, then you close out the program and you don't save it, they're going to be stuck like that. You're not going to be able to go back and then uh, you know, remove filters that you've already applied. But if you save your project and then reopen it, you should be able to continue where you left off and then re-edit these pictures or remove the filters that you previously applied. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Transform, you can make thumbnails, flip it, resize it, roll it, crop it, color replace, add some touch up, some brightness. Let's say we want to play with the brightness here. Like so. And then you could go back, you can know, see which you know which one you're uh, working with here, and you can kind of see. What you got going on. Just remember that these changes, so we got 6 and negative 37. It's going to apply to all of them, so you can't do brightness, you know, per picture. Unless you do, you know, take the pictures out or don't apply it to all the pictures when you run the process. All right, so let's actually get rid of that. Let's try another one here. Let's say we want a frame here. Let's try picture frame. You can change the styles. Change the background. All right, so let's apply this and see what we have here. So if we do the switch view, we should be able to see each one there. Process. Yes to all. Okay, now let's see what we got. So now we have our picture frame. Okay, so let's remove that. Process it. Actually, let's... Uh, We'll just uncheck it, then we'll remove it during the next process here. So let's add a filter. Let's try the wave effect here. And you can change the way the wave works. Okay, let's give that a shot. So now, since we unchecked picture frame and have wave checked, now when we process it, should remove the picture frame, which should still be here, like that, and then add the wave effect. So let's process. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, so now the frame's removed, but we have the uh, wave effect. Like so. All right, now let's uncheck that. Let's do one more here. Let's do a crop. Let's see, we want just the middle of every picture here. Of course, you could drag it around here or set specific dimensions here in pixels or percent. And if you click on that one, it shows you what it's going to crop. Okay. All right. So now we have our cropped out images there. And of course we can undo it by deselecting it and process it again. All right, so now we have the full picture back. So you can see you could do quite a few things with it, but like I said, if you do a bunch of settings here and you think you might want to revert back or remove some or edit some, just make sure you uh, save your project. So let's save this project. Let me check a couple boxes here. Let's add these. Let's uh, process it here. Okay, so now we should have the frame and the wave, which we do. So let's save the project. Let's call this a test here. Now we'll close it, 
we open it here. Load project test. Now let's see if we can remove these here. And now we're back to normal pictures. So you can see that's a good thing to do if you think you're going to want to revert some of the changes or edit some of your changes once you make the changes. All right, so if you go to their website, you can see they have different versions here, Home, Pro, and Enterprise. If you hover over it, you kind of see what it does here, and then click on Learn More. You can see all the differences here. So if you edit photos a lot, you think you're going to want to do a bunch of batch editing, and even if you're not going to do you know, multiple edits, having all these filters is really cool because they're really easy to use and you could add a lot of cool effects for not a lot of money. So I'll put a link in the description and you can download it and try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.